Hey there, how's it going? If you're into indie games, then more likely than not, you know the term Game Jam. It's all over the place, now more than ever. Since I take part in a lot of Game Jams and make videos about my experiences, I think, talk, and write about them quite a bit. And still to this day, I find it hard to answer the simple question, what is a Game Jam and how do you describe it to others? In the past, I came up with this definition. A group of people agree that over a defined period of time, they will make a game. Usually, a theme is chosen at the start and all participants must build their game around it. At its core, I think it mostly works, and I'm sure there's a good number of people that would agree with that statement. But having taken part in somewhere around 30 game jams in the last two or so years, and being exposed to countless more has taught me that it's a bit more varied than that. And speaking of learning, this video is sponsored by the amazing Jason Wyman. Jason is an industry veteran with the goal to teach you how to make games at a professional level. Whether you are a beginner or experienced, Jason will guide you through the process of mastering C Sharp and Unity to create incredible games. Courses include daily lessons, live support from Jason himself, and access to a private Discord channel where you can communicate and share ideas with Jason and other students. There's no better way to kickstart your game dev journey and learn firsthand from someone with years of industry experience. Jason is now offering the Vimlark Bundle, where you can get access to all three of their courses for the price of just one. The Programmer course will teach you all about C Sharp. The Mastery course will dive deep into Unity and its tools. Then the Architecture course will pull everything together by teaching you how to write clean code and help you create and structure high quality professional games. All three courses are part of the Vimlark bundle, plus an extra special bonus. Jason is adding an exclusive special edition monkey hoodie. This is the first time any merch has been made for one of my games, so if you'd like to learn how to make professional quality games with Unity, support me and Rock a Sweet Monkey on your chest. Click the link in the description to get started today. So game jams have exploded. If you look at itch.io slash jams, you can see that at any given time, there are dozens and dozens of game jams running. I actually went and counted while writing this and there were 99 active jams on that site alone. And that's just the game jams that are running on itch.io alone. I have no clue what's running on other sites and communities. I think a recent contributor to the boom in popularity was the pandemic. Last year, millions of people were holed up inside with more time on their hands than usual. That, mixed with so many free engine options and learning resources, led to a lot of people discovering the joy of making experiences for others to play. If you look at the top past jams page on Itch, you will notice that a majority of the most joined took place over the last year. This isn't conclusive evidence or anything, but it does seem like more people are participating in game jams more often. Whether that's the reason or not, I'm glad to see that more people are finding the fun in being creative. But now we have a problem. If you're a participant, what jam do you pick? If you're a host, how do you get people to participate? With so many jams happening at any given time, there's just no way to do them all. I always say that time is the most valuable resource we have, so how do you decide where to spend it? The first place I think most people look are what I like to call celebrity jams, meaning the organizer or host has a known name in the community. Examples are the Game Maker Toolkit Jam, the Brackies Game Jam, and more. Usually it's some form of content creator or game dev studio. I would also consider game jams like the Game Off Jam, which is put on by GitHub, or the Epic Jam, which is put on by Unreal in this category also, because it's the name of the entity hosting it that brings in a lot of people. These types of jams will always have a lot more participation because of the reach that they have in terms of the audience size. I find that a lot of people get into game jams through these, and they tend to use the more typical format, a time limit and a theme. These celebrity jams are a lot of fun and they're a great way to get into jamming if you've never done it before. There's always a lot of hype, everyone in the community is very excited and eager to share and communicate with each other. But if you're like me and start participating in more game jams more often, you may begin to get tired of the standard time limit and theme format, which is what I really want to talk about today. If you want to run a game jam and you don't have a large community already, how do you compete with the likes of those that have a big name behind them? In my opinion, it's focus and restriction. To some, it may seem counterintuitive that more restrictions would be a good thing, but I really think that those of us who enjoy participating in many game jams do it for the design challenge. You see this in poetry quite a bit. Artificial restrictions placed on the usage of words to help rein in ideas and work productively. Restrictions, limitations, focus, whatever you want to call it, cuts down on the number of options the creator needs to think about. Removing the analysis paralysis that comes from being able to use any idea. Having a solid focus gives you an anchor to grab onto and begin forming ideas around. I know most people will argue that that's what a theme is meant to do, but I see the theme as more of the anchor for the concept and not so much for the mechanical design. This is also an area where if you are running a game jam, you can differentiate your jam from the others by adding different rules and restrictions, which I'm going to be calling formats because for me, it makes it a little easier to think about them that way. These are some examples of formats that I thought were pretty interesting that could be mixed, combined, however you want to maybe make something new, or they may be formats you've never heard of and might want to partake in. 
Limiting tools is pretty popular. There are many game engine specific jams that limit all participants to creating games using the same engine, typically run by the creators of the engine themselves or by their communities. It's a great way to show off what can be done with a particular tool. Tool specific jams are not just limited to game engines though. Something like the Paint Jam, for example, tasks participants to make a game, but all of the art must be made using MS Paint. The Like It Was Made format for me is usually based on nostalgia, but not always. Jams like the GB or Nokia jams, for instance, restrict participants to using the color palettes from the respective devices as well as their screen resolution. It's a fun way to think about making games in a bygone era with only some of the restrictions. Another fun one out there are jams that extend a hand to those that say they can't make art. Both the Kenny Jam and the Miz Jam give contestants a pool of art that they must use, meaning ideas need to be developed with the available visuals in mind. Taking custom art creation out of the equation will definitely change the way people design a game. I personally don't know of any music restriction game jams. I have seen both music and art used as themes, but I'm not aware of any jams that require participants to use specific music or sound. If you know of any jams that do or have required a particular type of music or sound to be used, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to know. Color and size can be used separate from the Like It Was Made category as well. The Low Res Jam asks that the entire game exist in a resolution of 64 by 64 pixels. The Black and White Jam is just that, you can only use full black and full white. Same with the CGA Jam. Who doesn't miss having a scene full of magenta and cyan staring right back at you? When I ran my game jam last year, I went with an objective of collectibles, meaning that at some point in the game, collecting things will be a goal for the player. The score space jam is all about making high score games, as at the end of the jam, streamers will compete in the top three games to see who can attain the highest scores. With this type of format, participants know a core mechanic that everyone will have, encouraging different approaches to help yourself stand out. Limiting the way users can interact is a great way to get designers to think differently. The first game jam I ever won had the restriction of two buttons, and I really love figuring out how to make a platformer where the player can only have two forms of input. Mouse only is another fun one that I haven't seen too often, but I've tried it before myself and I've really enjoyed it. One of the more popular formats is restricting games to a specific genre, from platformer, bullet hell, roguelike, dungeon crawl, RPG, story, and so on. These are fun because you know the type of game you're going to make, so what can you create inside of that space that's different and fun? I would also add the mixing two genre themes that pops up quite a bit into this. I know we aren't talking about themes specifically in this video, but this one I feel is one I should mention because it's very similar. I know, time is one of the most basic parts of a jam, right? How is it a format? Mostly all jams have a time limit because otherwise it's kind of just making things. But some jams do use it as a selling point or a restriction. The Tri Jam is a weekly game jam that has a time limit of only three hours to build your game. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have the Decade Jam. Yep, 10 year time limit. Your game has to be made between January 1st, 2020 and January 1st, 2030. And you can submit as many games as you want to the jam during that time. You may laugh, but it's been joined by almost 2000 people and it already has 642 entries. You've only got about eight years and eight months left. You better get started. This category is for some jam ideas that I've seen, but I don't really have a category or group to fit them in with yet. Pieces of them could probably be fit into other categories, but as a whole, I find them a bit interesting and wanted to talk about them on their own. Like the Chain Letter Jam started by Mrs. This is kind of a living jam where a game was made by them and five people were nominated to make games inspired by that game. Those devs then make their game and then nominate at least two more people. And those new nominees make a game inspired by the new game that was created. It should be ever expanding as long as people keep making a game and nominating. I was lucky enough to be the second link in the chain and I have a video up top with more details if you're interested. Another idea I found that I absolutely love is the Secret Santa Jam, where participants make a personalized game for a random other jammer. Everyone writes a letter to Santa about the things that they like and it's passed to their Secret Santa, and then the game should be based around that. I didn't know about this jam when they ran it before, but if they do it again, I really want to take part. As I said, all these jam formats as I call them can be mixed and matched and there's no correct way to do any of them. And I guarantee there are so many more that the community can think of that I didn't mention here. If you like this and have other types of jam formats to check out, please let me know below. And I may make a follow-up video with more if there's interest. One type I did leave off, however, is a multi-round elimination jam. These typically only work in private smaller jams because they're really hard to organize. Last year, I took part in the Ultimate Game Jam with other YouTubers, which took place over three rounds where each round was a different restriction added to our game. It really was a lot of fun and super interesting to design for, and I haven't really stopped thinking about it since. So I'm sneaking in a little announcement here about a game show format jam that I'm hosting and will be releasing videos on in the next couple months. It's called Ready Set Jam, and each series will bring four devs together to make games in a three-round elimination competition. We'll be using many of the formats we've 
discussed here in combination to challenge and test the devs' design skills. We've even got special guest judges making the cut to the field each round until there's only one dev left to claim victory. I will have a separate announcement video with more details soon, but I wanted to give a teaser here as a lot of the ideas for this video came about from structuring the rounds and challenges. I'm super excited for it, and I hope you will be too. Okay, after all this, you may see why I don't really like my old definition of what a game jam is. I think it focuses on the wrong aspects and purposes of why we do game jams in the first place. So this is my new definition for what a game jam is. A game jam is a game design exercise to create an experience within specified restrictions. Really, a jam can be whatever you want it to be, but at its core, it's about designing and creating something. These are my thoughts, of course. If you agree or not, I hope it at least made you think a little bit differently about this fantastic hobby that so many of us love. Thank you all very much for watching. And don't forget to check out the Vimlark bundle from Jason Wyman. What you learn there can definitely help you in game gyms. Check out the link in the description. And I'd like to give an extra special shout out to my amazing Patreon supporters, especially Abishan, Clone13, Daniel Martin, David Scott, Nightfall, Kevin Haugau, Kirby, Cormai, Liam Sorta, MLK, Motsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Straight Up Gruntled, and Warren Steven Rose. If you would like to chat about this more, you should stop by my live stream at twitch.tv slash Vimlark. We're mostly always doing something related to game dev or game jams over there. Or you can message me on Twitter or join the Discord with a lot of other really cool people. I hope you're healthy and safe wherever you are, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.